Hello, and welcome to Casual Learning. I'm your host, John Bannon. Today, I'm going to finish my review of Chapter 2 of my newest book, God in Our Superdeterministic Universe, the number one argument for the existence of God, which can be found on uh, Amazon Kindle. Superdeterminism is a physics theory that is highly resilient to disproof. And I'll give you an analogy to explain why that is. Imagine that you had a device that could record everything that happens in the universe. All the particles, all the movements, all the forces, all the information. And you took that device and you recorded five minutes of the universe. Everything that happened in the universe for five minutes. Now, you, you took the device, put it on the shelf, you brought it back down from the shelf a year later, and you pressed play. And you watched those five minutes of the universe that you recorded. And you see everything that happened exactly as it happened because it's been recorded. Now, the question for you is, can you tell the difference between the live universe and the playback of the universe for those five minutes? And the answer is no, you can't. They look exactly the same. But the live version uh, occurs each moment of time, whereas the playback, is predetermined. Uh, it's predetermined because when you record something uh, and you put it on the shelf and you bring it back a year later, uh, everything that was on there is still on there from a year later. So it's all predetermined. The order of the recording is predetermined. Like a movie film, for instance, if you take a movie film of live action events and then you develop the film and you put it on a reel and you play it back on a, on a projector, You'll see the live events that you recorded. It's, a, it's just that the film itself is predetermined. The frames are predetermined. They're set in their order. They show the same thing. And nothing ever changes about it. It's predetermined. So when you, when you play back the universe for those five minutes, it's a predetermined universe that you're experiencing. So how do you know that it's not the live version, but a predetermined version? The answer is you can't know. In fact, you'll know that it has to be a predetermined universe and not a live universe based on Dr. Hansen's proof. Dr. Hansen's proof, which appears in the peer-reviewed physics journal, uh, Physics Essays, volume 33, number two, June of 2020, page 216, um, allows you to tell that it's actually predetermined and not a live universe because uh, in a live universe, uh, orthodox quantum mechanics cannot explain the 100% correlations that occur in the measurement of entangled particle spin uh, from different relative frames of reference. Whereas a predetermined universe is the only way you can explain that. So in other words, um, if you measure two entangled photons, A and B, uh, and you're at different relative frames of reference, let's say X and Y, two different observers, one observes photon A measured before photon B, and the other measures uh, observes photon B measured before photon A, because quantum mechanics is purely random, then the results are going to be different for each of these observers. Sometimes they may coincide, and other times they won't. You won't get a 100% correlation. See, So, uh, for example, if you do the experiment a certain number of times, where where observer X sees photon A measured first, the first measurement he may see clockwise. Whereas the other observer who sees photon B measured first, his observation is also a 50-50 chance. He may see uh, counterclockwise. 
it, it, it's also possible that because it's 50 50, their observations may actually correlate. That's true too. So it's possible for them both to see a, a counterclockwise spin, let's say, of the measurement of photon A. But it's not going to happen every single time you do the experiment with 100% correlation that these entangled photons will have opposite measured spins because quantum mechanics says uh, it's a 50-50 purely random chance as to what spin the photon's going to be. So because um, the quantum entanglement measurement experiment shows 100% correlations in every measurement that you could possibly take, Uh, those results cannot be explained by a 50-50 chance under orthodox quantum mechanics from different relative frames of reference. It's not possible. There's a, uh, there's a complete incompatibility between pure randomness of quantum mechanics caused by the collapse of the wave function and what we actually see experimentally when we do the typical quantum entanglement measurement experiment. That's what Dr. Hansen's proof says. And that's and the only way to explain the 100% correlations is if the universe is predetermined to appear that way. So, it is possible to have a predetermined appearance of pure randomness if these supposedly purely random measurements are really just a predetermined set. Now, I have a, a, an analogy I can show you, kind of let you understand how this is possible. For example, take the classic game Yahtzee. And in Yahtzee, you get five dice. And you get a convenient holder for those dice. So I'm going to take these dice and I'm going to stick them in the holder. Okay. So um, I'm going to shake this holder up so that we can get a random result of these five dice. Now I know that dice uh, are actually subject to deterministic physics and it's not purely random. But this is an analogy to give you an idea of how you could create pure randomness or how... It, it, something could appear purely random, but it's really predetermined, about a predetermined appearance of pure randomness. So, okay, so let's shake the dice. Let's get our random result. All right, put these in here. All right, I'm going to read off uh, the results of the dice for you. Okay, so the results are, we got a one, a three, a five, a five, and a six. So that's purely random. You just saw me do it. But this could be predetermined randomness. You don't know. And in fact, it is, because I previously wrote this down. So it matches perfectly what appeared to be purely random. So if you know a purely random sequence in advance, and then you predetermine its existence into the universe, which is what God does. God already knows what the results of these die spins are going to be, or rolls. It's been predetermined. You don't know, so it looks purely random to you, but it's not purely random to God. God knows already what the results are going to be. So that's how a predetermined universe can present what seems to be purely random results. Now, of course, nothing is purely random to God because God is omniscient. He knows everything that's knowable, so he would know the result of every die roll regardless. 
Uh, but nevertheless, this is what's going on. This is Dr. Hansen's explanation of quantum mechanics and the wave function and how you can appear to have pure randomness in reality, even though it's really just predetermined appearance of pure randomness. Now, you may have heard that the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics was given to a few physicists involved in proving that quantum entanglement is a non-local phenomenon and that it violates Bell's inequalities. And some would say, well, this proves that the universe is not real. It's, it's base level, it's unreal, it's based on pure randomness and probably the pure randomness of the metaphysical wave function uh, or some sort of unreal, metaphysical, invisible, immaterial, uh, quantum substratum of some sort. But the basic point is physical reality uh, comes into existence from nothing, basically. Uh, and they gave a Nobel Prize to these guys, supposedly proving that the universe comes from nothingness itself. Well, uh, the good news for you is that's not the whole story. <laughs> uh, the truth is that Dr. Um, Dr. Hansen's proof just came out in 2020. The Nobel Prize winners did their work years before this, and they didn't take this into account. Uh, Dr. Hansen essentially is arguing a fourth assumption underlying Bell's inequality, which is the assumption of continuous causation in physics. And Dr. Hansen is saying that assumption is false. Uh, there is no such thing as temporal causation or continuous causation in physics. We're living in a static block, Einsteinian reality. The Nobel Prize winners from 2020 uh, or 2022 uh, never addressed the, the fourth assumption because it was never listed as a fourth assumption. Everybody thought there was three assumptions um, to Bell's inequalities, but there's actually four. And that's what Dr. Hansen uses to... Uh, show that quantum entanglement uh, is not a non-local phenomenon, but is actually a local phenomenon of the local hyperplanes of space-time in the manifold surrounding the uh, quantum entanglement measurement experiment. Uh, so the Nobel Prize does not disprove Dr. Hansen's proof. These guys never even addressed it. Uh, nobody has. And Dr. Hansen's proof is based on common knowledge concerning the typical quantum um, entanglement measurement experiment. So no one's going to dispute that that's true. And it's also based on the relativity of simultaneity, which is based on Einstein's special theory of relativity, which has been proven correct for over a century. No one's going to take on Einstein and claim that the relativity of simultaneity is false. And therefore, there's no way you're going to be able to disprove Dr. Hansen's proof. Can't be done. No one's So it's a theoretical proof, but it's a solid theoretical proof. So as far as the supposed uh, results of the 2022 Nobel Prize winners that the universe is actually unreal, uh, it's not true. It's not true. These guys have not addressed Dr. Hansen's proof. Um, they haven't had time to address it. And nor and even if they did address it, they're not going to disprove it. Another thing that Dr. Hansen's proof addresses is the fundamental incompatibility between deterministic physics and the pure randomness of quantum mechanics. 
the, the essential problem is how do you get a purely random result determined by a deterministic mechanism or deterministic physics? Uh, the answer is you can't. They're, they're completely incompatible. I mean, the, the definition of purely, purely random is it's not deterministic. It's not determined by anything. So how do you uh, reconcile deterministic physics with the apparent pure randomness of quantum mechanics. It seems completely incompatible and unreconcilable. How do you do that? Uh, and Dr. Hansen actually figured out a way to do that. So, for instance, uh, if you think about the typical quantum entanglement experiment and you have photons A and B and their spins are measured, these entangled photon spins are measured. And let's say you measure uh, the spin of entangled photon A first, and its spin is clockwise. Well, then you know that when you measure the spin of entangled photon B, its spin will be counterclockwise because there's always 100% opposite correlations in the spins of measured entangled photons, two entangled photons. So here you have a situation where, let's say you measure the spin of A, you haven't measured the spin of B yet, but you have your deterministic measurement device here to measure the spin of B, but you already know what the measurement result of B is going to be because you know what A is. So since you know what it is, it's going to be, it's determined by the measurement of A. And yet it's a quantum phenomenon that exhibits pure randomness. So it's a 50-50 chance under quantum mechanics. So how do you recon reconcile the fact that you, you can determine what the result of the spin of B is going to be because you know what A is, but yet it's still a purely random process in quantum mechanics. That's the mystery of quantum entanglement, how you can do that. Uh, and, you know, the answer is quite simple. It, it, the, the the measurement spin results are predetermined. They appear to be purely random, but they're still predetermined appearance of pure, pure randomness. So in, in a way, you can think of this, all right, you got measurement device B, it's going to measure the spin of photon, ent entangled photon B. It's kind of like a slot machine. Uh, it, it's turning, and at some point you're going to press a button and it's going to stop and tell you what the spin is. And there's only two options on this wheel, clockwise and counterclockwise. So it's spinning and spinning and spinning. It's a 50-50 chance. It's purely random. You're going to press it at some point, boom, and it's going to tell you what the result is. Now, ordinarily, you would think that that result is purely random. But see, the thing is, you're talking about a slot machine, which is a deterministic mechanism. So you're pressing the button actually determines the result. So how do you get this randomness of quantum mechanics to be determined by your selection or your measurement of the result? And the only way you can do that is it's predetermined. The result is predetermined. So the mechanism isn't actually causing the result. It's just an appearance of causation. There's no temporal causation. The result is always going to be the same because it's been predetermined. It's not that the mechanism is causing the result. It's that it's all been predetermined to be this way, like watching a movie film of uh, a supposed live event. It's always gonna, the movie film's always gonna show you the same result. In other words, you could take a movie film of someone playing with a slot machine and they get a certain result. And every time you play the movie film back, you're still gonna see the same exact result. They, 
It's it's not that the, the machine on the playback is causing the result. It's just an appearance of a predetermined outcome, which appears on the film, much like the predetermined static block reality of uh, the universe. So it, it, it's not that the mechanism uh, causes the spin result. It's simply an appearance of correlation without causation. Um, cor correlation is not the same as causation. They're two different concepts. All right. Um, finally, a common criticism of superdeterminism is that it will supposedly destroy science. And the idea is that if you take away the assumption of statistical independence, uh, then um, you, you can't trust the results of any scientific experiment because they're not statistically independent. The experimenter is not removed from the experimental results, but in fact is a part of it. His behavior and thinking is determined uh, and it's correlated with the results. So that's not going to be uh, allow you to find out truths about the universe through science because it's all basically cooked in advance. Now, uh, this criticism of superdeterminism uh, is malarkey, basically, uh, easily tossed to the side because um, the universe is, in fact, superdeterministic, and Dr. Hansen proved it. So we still have science. We still have all the scientific uh, successful results that have produced all sorts of technologies for us, even in a superdeterministic universe. So there's no way that superdeterminism destroys science. Science has proven that it has gotten along quite well in a superdeterministic universe. There's no reason to think that superdeterminism is going to destroy science. That's, that's absurd. Uh, okay. That's my uh, review of chapter two. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that and you learned something. Uh, next stop is chapter three. And there we'll discuss, uh, I believe, eternal, no, the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is uh, very interesting. All right, take care, everybody.